Is anyone else in here gonna do this or what? Tell you what, boys, it's been an extremely quiet evening down at the BBC. Not. After a tweet from Match of the Day presenter Gary Lineker condemning a new immigration policy and law bill that the UK wants to bring in, the BBC had announced that they'd forced Gary Lineker to step away from the show as presenter for voicing his political opinion and disagreeing with the government. Off the back of that, fellow Match of the Day presenters Ian Wright and Alan Shearer announced they would be stepping down, as well as commentators for Match of the Day, analysts for Match of the Day, and presenters across Football Focus and Final Score. Two. With an exodus of presenters as well as outraged public opinion, it begs the question, what the heck is going on at the BBC? Had to say this video is not sponsored by BBC Sound. Yeah, it's been one hell of a week for the BBC's flagship football show. Match of the Day has been a fixture of British television for decades. A way for football fans to come back from work and watch all of the games they've missed on a Saturday afternoon. I mean, what better evening could you have? Getting back from work, kicking the shoes off, ignoring the kids and then watching Wolves nil, Brentford nil. Now, Gary Lineker, of course, has been presenting the show for a long, long time time now, but as someone that has always been quite vocal about his political opinions on Twitter. Now, listen, this isn't a politics channel, all right? Though I am happy to see Gary Lineker smoking that Tory pack. Of, of crisps. But in essence, the bill refuses asylum for immigrants that cross over the English Channel, for example, is going to see half a billion dollars worth of money spent on new detention centers for migrants in France and could see migrants shipped off to countries and areas of the globe that they're not from that are also politically unstable and hence very dangerous for them to be shipped off to. Now, it's received a lot of criticism, including from the United Nations, which is a pretty good barometer to show you that it's not not at all legal. But regardless of that, Gary Lineker was not too pleased with the bill either and compared some of the language like invasions of migrants, the over-dramatization of numbers used by Suella Braverman in explaining the bill, amongst other things as a comparison to 1930s Germany. But the BBC, despite this being on Gary Lineker's social media platform and not on a TV channel of theirs, told him that he was going to have to step down from presenting Match of the Day on the Saturday that's just gone. After that, in solidarity, Ian Wright announced that he wouldn't be taking part. Alan Shearer announced that he wouldn't be partaking in Match of the Day. In fact, Alan Shearer was not too pleased about the situation at all. Do you know how empty you are inside? You've shown your true colours to everyone now, bitch. It is over for you. And other pundits and presenters and commentators across the BBC platform decided they weren't going to be participating in their respective shows. You know, no presenters, no analysts, no commentators. Alan, Gary and co must have been creasing watching the new version of Match of the Day at home. <laughs> To be fair, the only positive of Liverpool losing to Bournemouth this weekend has been the fact that I only have to watch the analysis using subtitles on Match of the Day. I mean, it was getting out of control at this point. Who was even going to host the show? That's another pundit ruled out. But who, Chris Kamara? Flipping heck, even he's not coming to work. If you think I'm tuning into this show to watch Danny Murphy host, you can think again. When that TV license guy comes round to my house and asks me to pay my bill, he's got another thing coming. Even Micka Richards was not having any of this one so quickly that he physically burst out of the scene as well. Carl Walker won't be too pleased when he sees a BBC camera from the bench with Jermaine Genus on the other side of the lens. Imagine Tim Sherwood trying to pronounce Camel Dean Suleimana. Yeah, you was never had an order of more. Run away from Des, I'm, I'm not saying I'm a bad um, house homemaker. Meanwhile, Dion Dublin had some plans for his new house after receiving that sweet BBC paycheck. Right, I put the helipad over there. I'll put my Olympic size swimming pool over there. The five bed mansion can go over there. Genuinely, lads, I watched this this version or this weekend of Match of the Day, right? It was terrible. On it, there was no analysis, no commentary, just a bit of fan noise. I'm surprised the editors didn't go on strike. We were close to Ant and Deck presenting it, for God's sake. But honestly, for me, there was only one man for the job. I'm surprised they didn't just get the intern in to do some kind of analysis on the touch screen. Oh, I can't imagine it'll been high quality. First of all, look at this. 
That's a cooler flag there, as you can see. One of my favourite transparent, genuinely horrendous things to come out of all of this has been Conservative MPs pretending to watch football. I've seen so many of them tweeting like, oh, this new version of the match of the day is better. Yeah, because the host just told you you knew Bill was a piece of shit, mate. We can see through this, mate. You don't even know what a Crystal Palace is. You know what, honestly, if they think it's better off without Gary Lineker, I think they should do the presenting and analysis instead. Hello and welcome to the new version of Match of the Day, where the right-wingers aren't out on the pitch. <laughs> Jamie Carragher calls the scene on American television, bringing a can of 7-Up after Liverpool's victory against United. I've decided to bring my own can that I think represents the new BBC. You're telling me that Crystal Palace team is just full of black people? They must be stealing a living, am I right? Now, as you can see, Rishi, honestly, for me, I don't know why he started his run so early. He's quite clearly offside and will get deported. I was half expecting Piers Morgan to turn up and take the place of his sworn enemy on the show. Though, let's be honest, maximum of 20 minutes in and he'll be resorting to Cristiano Ronaldo content. Den Haag, dickhead, by the way. But the thing is, lads, if you're Ian Wright, if you're Gary Lineker, you have the power here. Nobody is tuning in to match of the day without the pundits that they actually watch the show. For. Do you think anyone is staying awake till 10.30 to listen to Jermaine Genus? Alan Shearer was at home chilling, trying a Jaeger bomb for the first time. I tell you what though, folks, that's bloody nice. That is really... That is bloody lovely. And as I said, it was a massive, massive own goal. The BBC don't have anything to show for in, from a football perspective without match of the day. In terms of consistent football output, they would have no skin in the game if match of the day didn't exist as it does today. And before long, the BBC was shitting it because of Gary Lineker. Usually it's the other way around when it comes to Gary, but I digress. What I will say though is this raises a massive, massive and bigger problem for the BBC when it comes to social media usage. Not only should Gary Lineker be able to voice his political opinions anyway on Twitter, on any social media, because people like Alan Sugar have posted much more problematic stuff on their profile and have not received any sort of backlash whatsoever from the company. But not only that, Gary Lineker is literally a freelancer. And by that, I mean he doesn't actually work solely for the BBC. He's not an employee of them. He just hosts for them as well as hosting for other people too. So they don't even have the right to dictate what what he says online. Furthermore, do you really think the BBC would have taken him off the air if he'd actually agreed with the bill? If he'd have come out and said, you know what, lads, yep, yeah, those migrants, they've got to go home. They would not have done anything. I'm afraid the reality is that they only did that because he disagrees with the government. BBC prides itself on trying to be impartial, but let's be totally real. They're absolutely not. The chairperson of the entire company is a conservative donor. He's given 400,000 pounds to the party so i don't have a huge amount of doubt of who he votes for as well as organizing an eight hundred thousand pound loan for former prime minister boris johnson there are people within the board of that company who used to represent the tory party so the makeup of the company is conservative and one high-ranking presenter has come out and said i don't agree with that and he's been censored and taken off the air further proving his point as to what current uk politics is like gary lineker rightfully spoke up a lot about the human rights record of, of so he did that on the BBC, but the BBC won't allow him to criticize the country that he actually lives in. So overall, it's highlighted a way bigger issue inside the BBC. And if anything, I'm actually happy that that has happened for that specific reason. The BBC have, in fairness, announced that Gary Lineker will be returning for the next show. And I imagine all fellow pundits that stood in solidarity with him will return, commentators and such. And have announced that there will be a new independent body or panel that reviews social media content. But honestly, bit of a shit show and the BBC have really shot themselves in the foot. What do you guys make of the whole match of the day Gary Lineker situation though? Let me know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this particular video then feel free to slap a like on it and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.